Hit him with the top water. There we go. There we go. Welcome back to the channel. So today we are back at it. Going to be fishing a little urban pond and I'm going to be kind of testing out some of my favorite fall baits and kind of showing you guys different techniques or at least uh, talking about them so that way you guys can get a better understanding of what you might want to be tossing uh, this time of the season. The bite's kind of changing. Uh, it's, it's not exactly winter so it's not super cold uh, but the bass are starting to feed and they're, uh, they're not really biting every Thing that you're tossing out there so those texas rigs uh wacky rigs aren't always working so sometimes you're going to need uh to know what else to resort to and uh, that's what i'm going to be showing you today so uh, in front of me right here i got a large assortment of baits i got some jerk baits uh there's four different kinds right there i got two chatter baits uh mainly this little section right here is going to be your area of uh, noise makers so we got the noise maker baits which is going to be the chatter baits the uh, whooper flopper, the buzz bait, and the uh, little spoons over here on the uh, spinner bait. And then we got the large baits over here, which are gonna be something that are gonna attract the big hungry bass, wanting you know a really big meal. You got the glide bait, river to sea glide bait. And then we got the hud gill, and that's gonna really attract the really big, hungry, aggressive bass, hopefully like the five pounders, uh, four plus at least. Um, and then we got some jigs so that we can get up in the grass lines. Uh, one other thing I would recommend is maybe a wacky rig. Uh, I don't have it out there, but I do always carry a wacky rig set up with me and you might not catch the biggest bass when you're using wacky rigs, but you know, when the bite's not working, toss a wacky rig out there and you're still catching fish. That's what's, you know, that's what it's about, you know, catching fish out here and having fun. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna get these things set up. We're probably gonna try out the glide bait or like the uh, bigger baits first. I saw some really big bass lined up over here right now. And I just kind of want to try those out. And then we'll probably swap out to some more uh, noise making baits. Cause I was out here at the boat the other day and uh, really pissed them off. And, and that's kind of what they're going after. So. Uh, wind's picking up though, so let's get to some action. Perfect. Alright guys, so the two main setups that I chose to toss right now are going to be the glide bait and the chatter bait. And the main reason for that is because this is able to work multiple areas. We can get the top and the suspending water and still create this sporadic kind of uh, dying bait fish action. I've seen tons of bluegill here, so you want to match the hatch. Now the reason why we're going with the chatter bait that's darker colors, matching the bluegill, trying to get sporadic. And uh, we're also working the lower areas with this bait. Uh, so that's where we're working these two. I also brought a wacky rig set up with me. Like I said, that's what I also tossed during the fall in case the bite kind of drops. Uh, but we're going to test these out first and see if we can get some big bass before we start chaining up and just trying to fish. Uh, so I'm going to work the walls uh, first. So let's get to it. All right. River to sea glide bait. These things can be a little tricky to use, but... um. There's tons of bass up in this area. They like to come to the shores. I've seen tons of them doing that. So I'm just going to start casting out maybe and just bringing it in. Just do the slow pops, see if anything comes up after it. We're going to swap out to the chatter bay real quick and we'll see uh, if that vibrating We'll get any of these fish going because there's tons of fish over here. Try to work it a little bit slower. Sometimes you can pop it or you can just reel it in. Kind of find different ways to work it. All right. These two have yet to produce anything. I'm going to go with one of my last resorts for... Uh, when the fall bite kind of falls off. Um, and that is gonna be a wacky rig. I'll go with the uh, green pumpkin, Carl's amazing little baits. I got a nice, nice wacky rig. It's perfect size if you ask me. Perfect color, green pumpkin. And uh, it's got a good weight, good durability. So we're gonna toss that out there. So the reason I'm not throwing the jerk bait or the spoons or any of the uh, other little shad-like baits is because this pond doesn't really have shad. It mainly has bluegill and uh, like creatures little worms and uh, 
craws, stuff like that. Not even craws, but just stuff that falls in off the trees. So we're trying to match the hatch more or less. That's why I'm not throwing the jerk bait right now or the spinner baits. Um, so we're just kind of sticking to this. The jig would probably work really well as, as well, but I mean, if we're throwing a, a bladed jig and it's not getting as many hits or really any hits, uh, I'm gonna try the wacky rig first before we kind of change out anything else because I already have that set up. So let's get to the wacky rig action. There we go. Yeah, he saw that wacky rig and he wasn't playing around. I'll take that. Oh man, this poor guy's already got a hook in his mouth. So we get to save him. I've never had anything like this happen to me where I catch a fish that already has a hook in it and it's nasty too. Look at that. Oh man, poor guy. There you go. Now you can see with the light. Look at that. It's all infected looking. Poor guy. Let's get him back in the water. Try to be soft. So one main thing about wacky rigging is just kind of being patient. It's just letting it sit out there and do its thing, hoping that a fish will just see it and pick it up. It can take, you know, 10 seconds in one spot before you tap it. Uh, it can take five seconds in one spot. It's kind of just figuring out uh, if there's anything there, you know, to keep moving. Um, but at the same time, you don't want to move too much. You want to get a good balance. There's a bunch of bait fish over here, so I'm going to just throw it right there, hoping that there might be a, a bass around there too. He'll see them all messing with it. Maybe he'll go pick it up. Got to find little things like that, little ways to uh, trick the fish. There we go. Number two, under the tree. Not a big one, but we'll take him. There we go, nice and easy. Didn't have to rip anything out. He's bleeding a lot, so I'm just gonna get him right back in. There you go, he'll be okay. He will be okay. I'll try to chatterbait again, and just kind of keep testing out different lures. Probably go back to the wacky rig if we have to, but just wanna see if we can get something else going. Maybe bigger bites on uh, chatterbaits or glide baits. I don't think anything will honestly go for chatterbaits here, just cause it might be too much noise and it's on the bottom of the water instead of the top of the water. They might be used to stuff like that. This is kind of a pressured pond. Perfect. There we go. There we go. That's a good one. As soon as I said something about the chatterbait, we get ourselves a nice one. Look at that. That's why we wanted the chatterbait, y'all. That's the difference between wacky rig and swapping it up to a bigger bait like a chatterbait. That is what we're looking for. Nice, healthy, chunky bass. It's probably two pound bass just because how fat he is. Doesn't look like it, but he is probably. Uh, maybe like 175. It's a real good chunky one, guys, on the jackhammer chatterbait. Uh, I mean, these things have been producing for me for the last few weeks. I keep talking about how this is a great fall bait. Um, so definitely something you want to be tossing right now, maybe with a paddle tail kind of replicate these dying out bluegill stuff like that uh, versus like a crawl so that way you can kind of slow roll it across the bottom you can even put a crawl though and kind of bounce it that's another technique that i use uh, a lot especially with with chatter baits but just you got to find the bite and see what they're going for like i said match the hatch there's a lot of bluegill here so uh, that's why we're kind of tossing this i to check the line on to make sure he didn't put too much wear and turn the line nope can't even really get the line because these chatter baits the way they set them up I still work them like jigs. I kind of pitch them in areas where a lot of people really wouldn't, and then just slowly roll it out of there. Learn bass like to hit it right when it's getting to the ledge or right when it's coming off of an edge. Uh, so that's what we're looking for. And we're fishing these walls because like I said, they like to retain heat. So anywhere where there might be heat, we're just gonna keep tossing by and uh, see if we can find something. A few more toss over here and then we'll go back and uh, fish the other walls. All right, guys, so we're going to be putting a jerk bait on, uh, but since there's a lot of grass out here and these jerk baits have bills on them, uh, we're not able to kind of mess with them because, well, also the treble hooks. Uh, so I'm going to be pulling out a four out hook and then uh, I'm going to be pulling these little zoom flukes. Uh, I believe this is what the ice white, white ice, yeah. And uh, we're going to be rigging one of these up just so we can get a jerk bait motion out there and see if that's something that they might be uh, 
going for but I'm not too sure I do want to show you guys how to hook these guys properly uh, you want to go all the way down like this and then you'll turn down and go all the way in you want to make sure that this edge of the hook is completely inside the front end of the fluke so that way when you pull on it it goes under the water instead of up above the water because the hook's sticking out uh, I'm gonna tie it on though real quick before we get that fed through but I just wanted to explain that real quick try straight down over there this might be after this the time I put on the uh, good old wacky rig again because fluke bite or jerk bait bite is just kind of one of those things where if they're hitting it they're gonna be hitting it all day if not it's kind of trying to find out what they are working with and it's we found out earlier wacky rig seems to be the one to go chatterbait got us a nice big boy so I might put on some sort of swim jig or something like that uh, and mess around on the side still got that hood go I might keep tossing that too but I'm trying to catch some more fish show you guys what techniques might work best uh, the spoon baits and stuff like that they're not really gonna work anything with too many treble hooks not gonna work unfortunately today just because there's a lot of grass here and anything with the top water there we go there we go yeah fluke bite last second last second came up and got that thing and that's how you work the fluke just real slow along the wall I was just talking about how uh, wow real small fish too I was just talking about how the bite's a little off with treble hooks and stuff that's why we work the weightless or not the weightless but the, the weedless uh, and you saw he came up right there grabbed it and not a big guy but another little fall technique that works um, it's the first one I've got today on the fluke and he's probably the smallest fish of the day so I'm definitely gonna probably swap back to the wacky rig um, like I said I wasn't throwing the spoons or anything like that because I get caught up in the grass anything with treble hooks or top water is gonna be a real mess today because how much wind do we have on top of the water uh, but yeah that's a nice one on the fluke so let's get him back in the water so we got one on the fluke we got one on the chatter we got one on the wacky we got thumped a few times on the big boy another good technique though I can't use here would be crankbaits uh, something that can you know mimic the, the fish around here as you can see I actually got a really nice bluegill mimicking one that would probably work really good to be honest uh, I just have to find an area where there's a lot less grass so crankbaits another good option uh, blade baits probably want to do a lip list so that way you can get there a little bit easier but there's only bluegill out here not really many bait fish so all right now I'm fishing for fun and even though the wind is insane I'm gonna try to put a whooper flopper on not for here but when i'm on my way back i want to toss this thing a few times and see if we can get a bite second that thing literally came out of the water flying oh my god <laughs> that scared the crap out of me one of the bigger ones of the day came up jumping out of this grass patch and just nailed it that is insane it's probably a solid two pounds nice one getting back in the water there he goes. louder noise is going to attract the fish they're going to be aggressive right now they want some easy meals but when you start making noise it attracts them they're like what the heck is that aggression starts kicking up poppers whooper floppers things like that work really good there we go Ugh, working it like a little popper it's like i'm saying it comes right after it wasn't trying to hit it to eat he was hitting it because it was making noise and he didn't like the noise it was making another solid one as you can see they're bigger fish are definitely bigger when you are able to uh, work something that's a little bit louder. Another good one. There we go. That's how they're doing it. They're literally just walking up to it and eyeballing it 
and then taking it after a while. That took him like three or four hovers before this fish actually took it. There we go. Another decent one, whooper flopper action. Alrighty guys, so that is gonna be it for today. As you can see, trying out a few different fall techniques to kind of uh, adapt to these bass and get them when the, when the bite's kind of changing. Uh, I just mainly wanted to show you guys a few different major techniques that I enjoy. Those are gonna be my top favorite fall lures uh, to kind of get the bass, even though the fall transition starting, the bite's changing and uh, everything's kind of shifting. Um, but yeah, you guys are gonna have to start getting familiar with new techniques, testing out new baits, and I just kind of wanted to give you guys a little bit more confidence and uh, how to use them and understand that a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, if you guys have any questions for me, please let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the uh, video, please leave me a thumbs up. Helps out. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can go ahead and get more future videos like this. But that's going to be it for today, guys. See you guys next time. Peace.